This video is based on a larger presentation that was previously made for insurance companies and it inspects the top mortality and morbidity causes amongst uh, Canadians. And the bottom panel currently shows the top reasons of death affecting Canadians. And it is also stratified by year so you can follow the trends. You can also take the same statistics and divide it by gender, which is currently revealed at the top panel. And the take home message there is that for the most part, there aren't major differences between the two genders with few exceptions. So for example, you can see that when it comes to death caused by cancer, men are affected more frequently than women. And where it really stands out are the external causes of death, which includes both accidents and suicides. And you can see that men are disproportionately affected compared to women. But where women stand out in particular in comparison to men are conditions that are labeled here as mental and behavioral disorders. And you can see that women tend to die more frequently from this category of conditions than men. We were wondering how do the mortality rates in Canada correlate with the hospitalization rates in Canada? So we studied this data and on the left hand side what you can see are the top causes of hospitalizations in Canada for different conditions. And in blue bars, you can see the number of hospitalizations required, whereas in the pink circles, you see the number of days required per each different condition leading to hospitalization. Luckily, you can see the top reason why Canadians are hospitalized is to give birth, and the rest are the different health conditions. What perhaps might also stand out to you, though, is that conditions labeled as mental and behavioral disorders require much longer hospital stay than is typically seen on average for everything else. The right hand panel now shows the top events why Canadians are hospitalized and usually these are different surgical procedures. Once again in blue bars you can see the number of hospitalizations required Whereas the, once again, pink circles denote how many days each of the surgery or procedure required a patient to stay in a hospital. Overall, over 3 million hospitalizations take place in Canada per year, and that in total affects about 8% of the total population. So then we wanted to combine these two graphs and see how that compares to mortality causes as well. In this graph, now we see the top reasons for hospitalizations that include both health conditions as well as procedures that might require Canadian patients to end up in a hospital. And we wanted to start dividing these by medical specialty that is affected. So the top one we see right there will be neurology, followed by pulmonary causes. Next in line are cardiovascular conditions. The globe denotes external conditions and the ribbon denotes anything related to cancer treatment. To compare once again, the top reasons for Canadians to be hospitalized with the top reasons for why Canadians die, you can see that they correlate with one another with exception of potentially cancer, at least for the top five reasons. And this is significant because while most of us might not necessarily ever ponder as to how or why we might die, it would be prudent for us to take any measures that would minimize our likelihood of being hospitalized. What we are referring to is taking behavior change measures that will prevent us 
to the greatest extent of needing hospitalization. That includes not smoking, regular exercise, healthy diet, and these are very obvious to all of us. The less obvious ones might also include regular medical follow-up, as well as proper insurance. That might be a surprising one to most. We know about life insurance. This is in the event of death to make sure that there is financial compensation to help our loved ones. But the types of insurance that neurogenomics is particularly fond of are critical illness insurance and supplementary insurance because these type of insurances take care of you in the event that some adverse medical condition happens to you right now. What might also be added to this list that could potentially significantly help personal well-being is also access to genetic testing. To link DNA testing to your health, let's briefly review what genome is. And in essence, it's all of your DNA, whereas the DNA itself is the blueprint that governs how all of your cells inside your body were supposed to develop and therefore how you yourself can exist. And this blueprint is a code made up of four chemicals that for sake of simplicity we'll just label as A, C, T, and G. And it is this type of information encoded in a specific order that determines how you not only developed to the organism that you are today, but also how you run as an organism on a daily basis. Segments of that DNA can be categorized into what is referred to as genes, which are respons responsible for building proteins, or what we refer to as tiny molecular robots that will perform all the different functions within your cells. And different genes will be responsible for producing different type of robots, some of which we understand very well, and some of them we still have to learn what they do. But the point here is that the concerted interaction between all of these molecular robots are responsible for determining who you are, including what your senses are, what your anatomical features look like, how your different organs might function, and of course, not surprisingly then, how your health might be affected. And this is how we can link genetic information potentially to your health outcomes. Therefore, your genetic information can be inspected to see what type of variations in the DNA you might have, and that can be correlated to health outcomes, which is then used to produce a medical report that can be provided to your doctor so that your doctor knows how to potentially alter your management in accordance to the type of genetic information that can be received. So let's take a look now at the top three out of five underlying causes of both death and hospitalizations in Canada and how that actually might be related to genetics. So the first one we'll focus on will be cancer. And what we see right here is the number of Canadians affected by cancer in any given year subdivided by age group. On average, about 7.1% of all Canadians are affected by cancer at any given time. But what we also know that approximately 8% of all cancers have hereditary predisposition, meaning there are underlying genetic causes that contribute to development of that cancer.
What that means is that approximately 0.6% of all Canadians have genetic predisposition towards developing cancer. That might not sound like much, but that is approximately quarter of a million of Canadians who have predisposition to cancer development without ever even most likely knowing it. So let's compare this with real life data. And as far as we know, there is no large scale population studies in Canada for genetic predisposition to different conditions, but in the US, there definitely is. And our favorite is the Geisinger's MyCode study because of the fact that they regularly update their stats. So as of September 20th, you had over 62,000 participants who had had their genetic results provided back to them. And those are people who were not expected to have underlying genetic conditions. And in this population, which you could claim are presumed healthy for genetic conditions, approximately 2.6% of them receive results that they have some underlying pathogenic mutations that could be impacting their health. And specifically when it comes to cancer, nearly half of those results are actually cancer related. So approximately 1.2% of that population received results demonstrating that they have genetic predisposition to cancer. So this is similar to the estimated number that we presented in just a moment ago. To categorize this further within the segment of the population that received pathogenic genetic results, meaning they have some underlying health problems related to genetics, approximately quarter of all of those results were information related to breast and ovarian cancer predisposition. About 12% were genetic results in forming of Lynch syndrome, which is a type of colon cancer predisposition, and 8% were related to all other types of cancer. People who have cancer in their families would belong in this category, and insurance companies run into this very frequently and is the top reason why typically critical illness insurance has to be paid out. Now shifting focus to genetic predisposition to cardiovascular conditions, that same study revealed that approximately 1% of the entire population studied had genetic predispositions to cardiovascular conditions. Within that group, the most common causes identified were genetic predisposition to high cholesterol, identifying about 10% of that subgroup. Another 10% were affected with genetic predisposition to arrhythmias. And finally, approximately 8% had genetic predispositions to other cardiomyopathies. It can be added that all of these factors predispose an individual to a stroke, which is one of the more common reasons why insurance companies have to pay out the insurance. The final category comprises the performance of the brain. And while certain conditions can indeed be tested for genetic predisposition, such as neurological variations seen in a population that includes, for example, autism, different types of epilepsies, or certain cognitive and developmental disabilities. And this indeed can be very valuable because it could determine how such individuals should be managed medically. For the most part, they comprise only a small segment of the population. The real benefit to this subgroup of conditions is what is referred to as pharmacogenetic testing or determining how a medication 
might respond for a patient. The reason why this is valuable is because for the most part, on average, anytime anyone is prescribed a medication, such medication is expected to only have about 50% efficacy. And the reason behind that is because we don't really know how to link medication to individuals' personalized biology until now. Now at least we can link how medications might respond based on individuals' genetics. And that is the greatest benefit to this group of individuals. To illustrate this point, here's how all of the known medications that currently can be linked to personal genetics are distributed throughout different medical specialties. And what you can see is that neurology and psychiatry comprise the largest group, meaning largest number of medications known to be linked to genetic factors are those involved in neurology and psychiatry. This is very significant because these type of patients are also the most likely to go through a trial and error and require switching from one type of medication to another. What you can also see is that the second largest group are those for cancer patients, meaning that cancer patients could potentially be testing themselves genetically to see if the medication that they are prescribed will even work for them or not in the first place prior to taking that medication. And the third largest group are those affecting cardiovascular diseases. So all of the types of conditions that we discussed have also big benefits from pharmacogenetic testing. So we hope this video illustrates how DNA testing can be of benefit to people in terms of reducing their likelihood of being hospitalized as well as reducing the likelihood of dying from some of the most common causes in Canada. This also should illustrate how some of the insurance could be selected by an individual. And this is of benefit because in Canada, insurance companies are not allowed to have access to person's genetic information and that type of testing, genetic testing, does not have to be reported to insurance companies. So this is a great advantage in choosing to select critical illness insurance or supplementary insurance. If you like this video, I hope uh, you will subscribe to our channel and give us a like. And we look forward to seeing you in the next installment.